So here's how you know this is a limited slip. Turn this wheel, the opposite wheel turns the same direction. Is there an open diff? That other wheel will be turned the opposite direction or not at all. Can, if I hold this and you spin that, what happens? I know. Sure. See how much torque you get to that side. Yeah, okay. Not much. I, I feel I feel it a little bit. That's because it's the viscous. If I got it spinning faster, maybe uh, the faster I turn it, the more they get. Hold on. All right, go. Okay. That's the effect that you're paying for, right there. Yeah. See, I'm able to resist it with my hand. Can you feel it getting harder the faster I spin it? Yeah, the faster you spin it, then the more you know difficult it is to stop. Yeah. That sheer. I think I called it a. What is it? It's a sheer thickening fluid. I yeah. Think is technically, what's in there. This is the remains of the rear diff out of this car, the second one. Uh, this is a viscous limited slip differential, an R160. Essentially what you need to do is you need to disconnect the differential altogether, which if you're swapping it, you're going to need to do anyways. And then let it drop down really low, and that gives you just, an, just enough space in the CVs to get the CVs disconnected out of the differential. Right. First thing you're going to do probably is disconnect your drive shaft. This, the new differential came with this little stub of a drive shaft, which is handy for illustration purposes. Um, and you look at the pattern, actually it's rectangular, it's not square, so when you're putting it back together you'll have to note that you orient it correctly so the holes line up. Right. But these are just nut and bolts on here, so you just have to, you probably have to put it, you may have to put a backup wrench on the one side and then just undo the nut, take the four off, and then you might just kind of whack this with a hammer and it should just pop right loose. Um, the, there's a drive shaft protector that's over there usually on some models. It's this thing sits up under the drive shaft, uh, something like that. Or maybe it's the other way around. But you have to unbolt that thing maybe <laughs> to get access to it. You may not either. You might be able to just get these undone and let this just hang the axle there. Okay. But then there's these four bolts and there's a plate that goes up under here. So there's a plate that's bolted up with here up to the cross member and then bolted into the side of the cross member there. So you have to take these four little bolts out here, and then take these four big bolts out here. Um, and then, of course, the um, you'll have to disconnect the axles too. So, you'll, you know, like I said earlier, you'll take these two studs out, which will let this drop out of the back of the cross member. And you'll put a jack or something under there and lower it down a little bit. And once it's down low, you have to get something in there and just the, these just snap in the axles. So you'll just have to pop them out. And have that, you use this ball joint splitter and just kind of get it in there and pop. So you'll get this as a unit from the wrecker, you know. Okay. If you look it up on like carparts.com, car it'll be listed under carrier as the part grouping they listed under. So all, all right. this will come together as a unit, and you're going to swap it out as a unit. But you don't even have to take the cover off the case. Definitely don't take these off because these have some adjustment shims on them. Depending on what car you get from, you might need to change this this thing out here, this um, flange. But you just zip the one bolt off and then tap this off. You can change it out. Most of the cars that I've dealt with use this, so I did, I've never had to change that off. But I would not swap the carrier because there's lots of adjustments that need to be done um, with these bearings and stuff to get it running right. Setting the pinion depth and then the, the shims on these so that this is held in the proper place and stuff. I wouldn't mess with that. But in theory you could. Yeah. Okay. Um, but if you're going to go to that trouble, you may as well put a like a good limited slip in there. Because these viscous limited slips aren't that good. The nice thing is about them, you can't really destroy them like you can a clutch pack where you can burn out the clutch pack. But they don't provide as much torque as the clutch pack. But if you're going to go to the trouble of pulling the carrier, get, I would get a torsen, one of the torsen limited slips for off-roading as far as what's available now. Because um, that's actually what the, the Humvees actually have tor torsen limited slips in them. As far as checking the ratios, 
you know, the, the best thing to do is, um, is turn the input shaft and then count the output shaft revolutions. But you can also, if you get the cover off, the, um, the, the ratios are actually um, stamped on to, if you can get it out, which is tricky. There it is, okay. And so, let's see, somewhere on here, on the ring gear, it's stamped. Okay, you can see right here. And it's stamped different way than people usually talk about the ratios, but it's 40 to 9. Right, so hopefully you all know your ratios from elementary school. But so that's, um, you just did that. So 40 is the number of teeth on the ring gear. 9 is the number of teeth on the pinion gear up inside here. And so you just divide those. 40 divided by 9 turns out to 4.44. As far as the axles go, how, do you have to make any changes at all? No, not, not with these. This, the, not if you're just swapping this R160 to this R160. And there probably are variants of this that are set up for different axles. You'll have to watch for it. But for this, the, the stock axles work just fine um, for this particular swap. So there's a trick you can, if you're looking for one of these in the junkyard, a little flat ground into the cross pin shaft. If it's got that slot on the shaft, it should be one of these viscous limited slips. Okay, cool. Some of them actually had a sticker on the cover, but the sticker's a little foil fix sticker that said LSD, but that falls off all the time. But yeah, like these are funny because they don't even look like a viscous limited slip. The only way you can tell is that this area is a little thicker. Basically just from the thickness of this ring right here. Yep. What does another one look like that's not this? This is, the, you won't have the seam here. It's just a single piece. It's a little thinner in this area. And yeah, there's no seam because this is all just this carrier is just all one piece. 